always felt like a second-class citizen in my family, overshadowed by my sister, the golden child. When a series of events finally pushed me to confront my parents about their favoritism, it erupted into a family conflict that left me questioning my relationships and my future. Did I go too far? Or was it finally time to speak my truth? Here's what happened. My sister is my dad's golden child, and no matter how much I try to get him to see me as her equal, it never works, and I believe she takes advantage of it. Usually, it is not much of an issue, but this week, some things happened that were the cherry on top. I'm hopefully getting married next year, and she asked if she could invite her in-laws because they will come the next time she comes over. I said okay only because my parents are paying, but I know she just wants to do it for the attention. So she will have at least four people from her political family there and sure parade them around. Also, my parents are about to have a big anniversary in November, but they are postponing any celebration because my sister, who lives overseas, doesn't want to travel for so long until things are even calmer. But last month, she went on a holiday to a country next to hers. I was having lunch with them and my fiancé when they informed me they were moving their big celebration to next year and I couldn't handle it anymore. I said to my dad, of course you will postpone, we should all stop living, until she is here. He said it was uncalled for and I was making a big deal about something that had nothing to do with my mom and me said they will, of course, have something intimate and I was as important but I don't believe it. I stood up and said to my dad, I am so sorry the love of your life is not around, but the most important woman in your life should be your wife, not your daughter. After that, I left. The next day, I felt bad and tried to call my mom, who refused to speak with me and just sent me a text telling me I was bitter and hurtful and needed help. But they, and particularly my dad, hurt me with their desire to give her such a prevalent role in their lives when she has lived abroad for about 10 years. My dad blocked me, and my fiancé is worried they won't pay for the wedding anymore. My sister, trying to be the center of the universe as usual, tried calling me but I didn't reply. I gave it a few days, but my parents haven't contacted me. My sister stopped trying to get in contact with me, but she contacted my fiancé to check on me. I visited my grands today, and she told me I need to apologize because my parents love us both, but we are different and so got different things, so I began to wonder if I was the asshole. I just want some days where I am the most important person to my parents, and still believe that my sister's golden child status should be addressed and corrected. But maybe I was the asshole for the way I expressed it. Edit. I am 26M, and my fiancé or fiancé is a woman. English is not my first language, sorry. I also want to clarify that I don't think my parents are bad people, but just bad parents. Edit 2. This is a long time coming. My sister, 33, and my dad have a little club. She is smart, reading since four and all that. Since she was very young, my dad used to take her to visit his clients in a nearby city, and sometimes, she would stay with one of his best friends who owned a bookstore she had a very large book collection that my parents refused to throw away, even when I tell them to send them to the woman, dad's best friend, or my sister. They talk about economics, politics, etc., almost daily. I'm not interested in any of those, and yes, he tried to take me with him, but I was always bored and did things like going to my games or getting stadium tickets for a team, but I feel he likes her more. My mom, on the other hand, has ups and downs with my sister because they are very different. The last issue was my sister's weddings five years ago, yes, she had two, one intimate where she lives, and another in our country. My mom wanted to have her dresses made from a special fabric, and my sister put a budget limit on how much the dress was going to be, and even wanted to wear the same dress for both things. They had an argument, but in the end, she had two dresses but with the budget. She didn't even let me bring my girlfriend future wife, because she wanted it to be intimate but there were like 50 people there. My mom told my fiancé she would be buying or making her dress singular. My mom and fiancé have a very good relationship, so I am sure my sister was involved somehow in convincing her of that. My sister has a PhD that my parents paid for and doesn't work in the family businesses at all. She only consults sometimes and pretends she doesn't want to be paid for it. My parents supported her until she got a job, and every time she graduated with her master's and PhD, we had to go to Europe to be there. I work in a family business, so I know they have to talk to me eventually, even if they're angry. I could give more and more examples of their favoritism towards her. I also don't hate her. I just wish she would let me shine on my days. And yes, the wedding would be a gift, but if they were willing to pay for two and many dresses and a honeymoon, 
then I deserve the same treatment. Edit 3 slash update 1. In case anybody wants to know, you might be happy about this. I got a message from my dad telling me to be in a family Zoom call, to say everything I want, and everybody will take turns. He said if I didn't offend, he would pull out his funding from our business. So I had to go, but told him I would ask my fiancé to be in too. It was me, my fiancé, my parents, my sister, and her husband. The moment I connected, I noticed my sister was pissed. I was the first to speak. I told them all my feelings and even brought up the fact that they are treating my wedding differently. And I even talked about what some commenters brought up about my parents leaving the businesses to my sister. I spoke about how hurtful it was. They preferred her. They seemed to talk to her about serious things and she gets so much. They all think she is great, etc. Nobody said anything or interrupted me, which is very common in serious family talks. Then they asked if my fiancé wanted to say anything, and she bravely said, she felt she was not part of the family. She always thought they thought of her as a daughter, and she stood by me. Then it was my mom's turn, and she told me she was sorry about my feelings, that they tried to do things I liked, and that they love us both equally. She said it was sad. I pretended everything was okay, and they didn't know how deep it was, but she still thought I needed help. She then told my fiancé she loved her, but my sister was her only daughter. Then it was my dad's turn. He said he is sorry I feel he doesn't like me, but he isn't sorry for loving his kid. He said I didn't mind the tickets, cars, or even living in a house rent-free, and he was disappointed. He said everything they own will be divided 50 to 50 when they die, and if I didn't want my sister to have anything to do with our business, then I could buy him out. He said they would pay for my wedding no matter what because it's something they always wanted to do for their kids, but are not happy with me. He also told my fiancé that she should be grateful, and not greedy. By then, I was upset with the lack of apologies and the attack on my fiancé, but I held it. Then my BIL told me he didn't know how I felt about his family, and he just assumed his nuclear family would come, just like I was at his brother's wedding. He said he had no hard feelings over it. Then it was my sister. A thing about my sister is that when she is truly angry, she doesn't swear or scream. She is just really cold, hard, and to the neck. She said she could feel me distancing at around 10 to 11 when she visited from uni, and I was not included in some conversations with my dad. She said she accepted being my guardian at 18 if my parents died, so she had to be brought up to speed on all matters and didn't want to stress me out. She said she could have been a better sister, and she was sorry I grew so full of resentment, but that her career path had nothing to do with me. She reminded me I was offered to go abroad, but I didn't want to. She reminded me that I had gone on holiday with her, and let me know those holidays were paid for by her or her husband, not my parents' news to me. She said she asked me about her in-laws coming because they need to plan the trip around my wedding. She said my fiancé and I were only seven months together when she got married, and that she didn't want my parents to have to pay for her trip. She said that the reason she doesn't want to get paid for consulting is because she thinks it is not right, but that next time, she will invoice me her actual hourly rate since I am so insulted by it. She said she went to the Netherlands from Germany because she was truly burned out and is pathetic. I think it is the same as taking a 10-hour plane. She said my grandma was the one who told her everything I said because my parents tried to protect me and that she was done with me for the moment until I got therapy. And the last thing she said was that she loves me but doesn't like me at all right now. This is an obvious summary, but the way she said things is something I have seen her do to people, but never to me I almost cried, but she had no niceness in her eyes. My parents said they could get me therapy or I could find it myself, and that if I didn't try something to help myself, the wedding was the last thing I would get from them. What made me feel worse was how my sister spoke to me. She had never talked to me like this, even when we argued, so I knew she was serious. I got Maya handed to me. Yes, I am jealous and the asshole. I am upset, my fiancé is crying, but I think I need to evaluate my next move. Also, we are from Latham. I haven't been able to sleep and decided to read all the comments again. I tried calling my sister because even if I was jealous of her, the way she talked to me still hurt me. She refused to talk to me, but I could speak with my BIL. He said the reason she doesn't want to talk to me is because I hurt her deeply, and she feels emotionally drained by me and knows if we talk, she will say more hurtful things. This made me realize how much I love my sister, and the problem is me, I still have bad feelings and feel I have been slighted. I cannot say I am magically a different person, 
but my family has never talked to me like they did. And my sister has always defended me, and I thought she did it to look good. I am beginning to think maybe she actually loves me, I am very confused. My BIL is an amazing man, too, and he told me to just get help and give it time, but I am unsure what to do or where to go, he told me to research therapists and pick one, and he would help me choose if I want his help. He also said I should stop thinking my family doesn't care that they are not perfect, but they do their best. But he also asked me what my fiancé's family was contributing to the wedding or our lives, and I could not think of anything. She lives with me and works with me, and her parents are not paying anything because they say my family is better off. I don't know where that will go, but I did tell her I need help because I became a monster, so no wedding until my family issue is fixed. She is crying but said she understands. My grandma said that she told my sister because my parents just told her there was an argument but not what I said, looking back what I said is disgusting, and I feel bad about it. She said my family wouldn't react so strongly unless they loved me a lot. I asked my dad if I could take some mental days off, not a thing in my country, and he said it sounded like a good thing and reminded me they love me and just want me to be happy and not just pretend to be happy. Also, the books are in her walk-in closet in her bedroom at my parents' house. They still have a lot of my stuff in my bedroom, and my parents said I'm welcome to go to Sunday meetings whenever I feel ready. I also must admit that she did two weddings because my parents asked if she would be willing to do so. My mom wanted to get her super fancy dresses, and in the end they got two dresses for about 600 euros because my sister put a limit of 300 per dress. I think maybe I am jealous of her because she is actually better than me, I just don't want to feel like this anymore or hurt my family anymore. So I guess I can thank Reddit for the hard comments. I have so many issues and so much jealousy about my sister to get over I don't know where to start. I am beginning to doubt if I am even ready to get married. But if the comments had been full of support, I would probably not have seen them. And of course my family call was really something hard to be in. In a family where boundaries and respect seem to have flown out the window, I found myself caught in the middle of an unexpected housing crisis. When my sister-in-law and her family took advantage of our hospitality, leaving a trail of mess and chaos, I had to make a tough decision. Was I wrong for throwing them out and standing my ground against entitled behavior? Here's how it all unfolded. My husband has two brothers and one sister. His sister and her husband are not my favorite people in the world. Recently, they have been couch surfing as they lost their home, a long story that could have been avoided if they had adults as they should have. First, they stayed with my in-laws, but they used the excuse that my FIL has diabetes to get rid of them and their rowdy children. Next was his older brother and his wife. They had two spare rooms as two of their older children moved out a year ago, and they only have the six-year-old and their 13-year-old twins at home. After three weeks, they had to move out due to a planned refurbishment. They were happy with them as they were generally tidy and helped out in the home. Youngest brother was the next to take them in. While my SIL was there, she helped out at home and kept her children on a leash. The youngest brother's wife is very house proud and she allowed them to stay for a limited time only as they have had a baby recently and her mother will be staying with them to help out for the first six months. Then, they emotionally manipulated my husband to say, okay. I agreed to it on the condition that she and her husband, as well as their children, keep the place clean because in the past, the only place they were messy was my home. For example, if they are throwing something into the kitchen bin, they will throw it in the general direction of it, and not in the actual bin. It's extra gross when it's a foodstuff that dries up and stinks out of the place. Similar things happened in the past where she would leave her sanitary towels on top of the bin lid in the bathroom, instead of in the bin. Her oldest daughter started her periods recently, and I asked the younger brother's wife how things were for tidiness. She said she had no complaints. They went to bed on time and kept the place clean. However, they were there for only two weeks. They are always tidy in the other houses, and I know this from experience too. During Christmas and summer holidays, when we stay over at each other's places, I've seen the difference in how they are at my place and the other places. Before they moved in, I made the younger brother and my parents-in-law witness to them, agreeing to keep my house as clean as it is, and to chip in with chores. If they broke the rules, they would be out immediately. She fussed and denied past wrongdoings, but said as you wish, your highness, sarcastically. The first five days were smooth sailing. This morning, I found a sanitary towel on top of the bin, and not even wrapped properly. That is not all. Her daughter is staying in my daughter's room, 
and she made a mess of the shampoo and conditioner in her bathroom, and left a tampon on the side of the sink, forgetting it from last night. Her husband leaves early for work, and the kitchen is a mess when I finally get downstairs. I have a curious toddler, and I don't want him to pick up a bloodied sanitary towel. I knocked on the guest room and told her to pack her shit and get out. She looked angry and tried to play innocent. She said it was only some blood and to chuck it in the bin if it bothered me so much. I told her no and picked up her suitcase, throwing their stuff at her. At first she wouldn't leave the house, saying she was going to wait for her brother if she doesn't take orders from me, but I told her this house belonged to me too. I dropped her and her youngest ones off at my in-laws. A few hours ago, her husband came back from work, and when I wouldn't let him in, he made a scene. He went to my in-laws, but they don't want them there, due to Fael's illness. When my husband returned from work, my in-laws turned up in our driveway with her and her family within 20 minutes. They are still standing outside and squabbling about being let in. I refused to open the door and told my husband that if he backed down, he wouldn't be welcome in our home either. So, the family thinks am I the asshole because I have never liked her and am using any excuse to get rid of her. Yesterday, my driveway looked like a scene from some Mexican standoff. They were out there discussing the matter while I refused to go out and engage. After two hours, yes, two whole hours, they left. They are currently at my in-laws, but they made a promise to return to discuss the matter tomorrow as everyone will be home from work and that way, we could all find a workable solution. Well. At least that is what my husband relay. When my husband got inside, I told him that I would not have them in my house. I told him that he could clean up after them. Which he did. After cleaning up, he asked me why I made him do that. I told him I was just as grossed out over other people's bodily fluids as he was, and unlike him, I wasn't biologically related to them. So if he found it unsavory, imagine how shitty I felt in the past cleaning up after them. He promised to buy a new bin and bleach the sink three times. Our strategy for tomorrow is that under no circumstances are they coming to live with us. His niece will be made to clean up the bathroom shampoo and conditioner mess. He left that part for her. In the meantime, our daughter can use our shower. We'll see how this turns out tomorrow. Yesterday was a long day at my in-law's house. We went early to get it over and done with. My in-laws started with the guilt trip first. They mentioned that they would take them in until they found a place, but due to file diabetes, it wouldn't be good for his health. I told them to tell their daughter to parent her children so they wouldn't run around amok like monkeys. That way, they could stay with them, as they would have spare bedrooms. That didn't land well with SIL. She went on a tirade about how I have always been jealous of her, and that I was trying to drive a wedge between her and her brother. I told her she didn't like her own life, so me being jealous of her in her life was a stretch that required suspension of reality. She asked my husband if he was okay with me telling him what to do with his family, as he always stays out of my family's business. She told him to lay down the law and tell me that his sister and her family would stay as long as I.T. took them to find a new place to stay. My husband was having none of that. He told her that the house was mine just as much his, and it was a two yes and one no deal. Just because I was staying at home, now didn't mean that I didn't contribute to buying the house when I was working. The younger brother and his wife said they wouldn't be able to host them as they had his MIL staying due to the baby. The older ones mentioned the refurbishments. Both the younger and the older one's wife said that I was making it up about the cleanliness, as she always kept her own house clean and kept their places clean. They told me to suck it up and act like family. I told them I wasn't there to argue about her cleanliness as I saw what I saw, and her brother was witness to it and had to clean it up. He confirmed that he did, and that I wasn't making it up. My SIL slipped up and said, why did you clean it up to her brother? According to her, I was meant to clean it up. Either she is the dumbest bitch alive to admit it, or she knows she has the whole family in her pocket. Either way, I made it clear she wasn't going to stay with me, and because she got along much better with everyone else in the family, they would figure out something around their own lives. My husband told his niece that she was old enough to clean up the remaining mess, but she said no. Her father jumped in and said she is your niece, but my daughter, don't you dare tell her what to do. It got heated between them, so they both had to walk it off. I told her and her husband that the only reason me and my husband were there was to get money back for the bin we had to throw out due to her sprinkling biohazards around the house. She laughed in my face and said it would never happen. I said fine. I hope you realize that when I threw you out, I didn't pack all your belongings. 
I still had her daughter switch, her husband's and her two younger one's tablets, some of her jewelry, and a few other bits and pieces, as it all happened so quickly that day. It would all be sold to recuperate my cost. We left, but she was yelling loudly about what she would do to me if I dared to sell anything. My husband has my back, and he said go ahead and sell whatever you need to. Later on, they kept texting my husband to do them one last favor, putting up with her for a few months until she got back on her feet. I told him that no matter what, I wouldn't agree to let her, her slobby husband, and her horde of children back in. They texted me, too, guilting me about his niece's education. With no place to stay close to her school, she might have to start at another school if they get a rental that isn't in the school zone. I texted back tough luck and blocked them. My husband won't block his parents but was pissed at his brothers for telling him that he was selfish to not take them in, as they were in a hard place in their lives. They did admit it was gross, but excused her behavior by texting that maybe I did something to aggravate it. To top this off, the oldest wife left a voice message through her husband's number on my husband's WhatsApp. She said, I kid you not. You are still okay to watch her six-year-old on Tuesdays and Wednesdays like usual. I told him to say, figure out what the answer to that request is. So that is where we are now. I went to pick up my children, but I had to stick around a little longer as a new family was moving to the area. The parents wanted to meet their children's classmates' parents. So we had a small meet and greet. The office brought my husband's older brother's daughter, the six-year-old, to me as I usually pick her up, and on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, she stays with me. No one had picked her up, and when her teacher noticed me waiting in the hallway, she asked an office admin to bring her to me, thinking I was delayed due to meeting with the new parents. I told them that I wasn't responsible for her anymore on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. They took her back to the office, and they must have called her mother. When I returned home from the meet and greet, my husband said his parents had called him and spoken their minds about me abandoning their granddaughter. They also put his older brother's wife on the phone, and she was shouting at my husband. And I kicked out also had a few words with him. It ended with my husband telling his parents that they had lost the privilege to talk to him for a week, and he would only unblock them when they gave him and me a sincere apology. He explained that it was up to the parents to make pickup arrangements when I had made it clear I would no longer provide free services. The SIL I kicked out is staying with her parents for now. Her husband and her younger two and two of the older ones are staying with my in-laws. The other older two and the other two younger ones are spread between the other two houses, but they made an indirect threat, saying it would be a very temporary arrangement, as she promised it wouldn't take long for her to make her brother see the light. I think I am in for a long ride.